Ah, there you are. I am part of the team helping with the Eid. I mean, highly classified and very, very secret thing. The fact of the matter is, I've come to inform you of a rather interesting development. It's about the girl who brought back... Who, who was brought back from the empty. She's finally woken up, you see. Oh, let me see who she is. Let me see her face. Who is she? Yalfort! And Zordia, too! We heard the news from Thancred. Is it true? Why, yes, it most certainly is. Apparently her name is Gaia. She claims to be a free citizen of, of Yulmore. Oh? Although she remembers nothing of the events leading up to her attack on Eden. She's lost her memory. Parts of it, at the very least. We also cannot be sure whether she's telling the truth or, or if it's merely a ruse. She has to display any hostility, which is encouraging, I suppose. And Thancred's with her now, is he? Yes, he's taken her to Yulmore, mainly to verify what she's told us so far. Quiz the locals, that sort of thing. After that, the plan is to come back here. Though they're taking rather longer than I'd anticipated. Do hope nothing is amiss. Let's go to Yulmore. To Yulmore we will go. To Yulmore we will go. Hi ho the Mario. To Yulmore we will go. Or not. I guess they're coming back. Good grief, are you always this slow? I was not expecting. Dem's lips. Dem's lips. She's the most Nomura character she, yeah. Yeah. At this rate, it'll be dark again before we know it. The night sky returning is all well and good, but it does make each day seem awfully short. And are you still dr dragging your heels back there? At least act as if you've got a purpose, would you? Those lips are her defining character. They're the first thing I saw. Now look here. I'm not one of your servants. Why don't you try carrying your own luggage for a change? Them's heels too. Thancred, you're back. You lot are aside for sore eyes. Yes, even you, Orionche. Gaia and I have just finished shipping her personal effects from Yulmore. I'm glad we could pro finally meet. Properly, I mean. So, uh, did you learn anything useful? Other than when she lives, not an awful lot. Her supposed neighbors barely knew the first thing about her. Hells, she she barely knows the first thing about herself. Her recollection of her life in Yulmore is patchy at best. I'm just looking at her face. I was not expecting that under that armor. But she seems convinced that she'll regain her memory if she accompanies us. And so she invited herself to join our merry band. And for her... Her first act, she ordered me to carry her luggage. If you insist on standing around talking, might I suggest finding a place to sit down first? My feet are killing me. I mean, girl, you're wearing stilettos. Then perhaps we should have chosen more sensible footwear. Still, it's not such a bad idea, shall we? Real though. Thancred, reduced to this. I've got so many questions I want to ask, but I probably shouldn't bombard her with questions. Amnesia, tis troubling, though not entirely unexpected. Well, I've given you my early impression of Gaia, but I would be interested in hearing your opinion. Go on and talk to her and see what you make of her situation. Is her face being covered by the... Table? Rude. Very interesting looking table, I'll give you that. So you don't remember anything at all? Not attacking us? Not falling unconscious? Such selective amnesia would rightly raise suspicion within those of a cautious mind. Yet she doth speak the truth. It would lend credence to my current hypothesis, though admittedly some further. She's only just woken up. We don't want to bore her back to sleep. In any case, I prefer to follow my instincts, and they're telling me that Gaia means us no harm. After much deliberation, I thought it only right to to let her know about our work in the empty, as a sign of goodwill. After all, trust works both ways. They look tiny in these chairs. So you're the one I'm supposed to have fought. Come to think of it, I recognize you from somewhere. Maybe I just have one of those faces? So you should, considering you tried to kill me. Well, perhaps you just didn't make much of an impression. But to be honest, I do feel that since meeting you, those hazy memories are becoming slightly clearer. It's like remembering fragments of a dream, only to realize those things actually happened. <sighs> it's as though my whole life has been leading to this. Thou speakest, speakest as though 
thou didn't, didst expect these events. I guess you could say that. It's what the fairy tells me. Fairy? I can't see it, but it's as, it's as though there's someone else in my inside me, and I can hear its voice in my head. It whispers to me and lets me use its power. Magic, I suppose you could call it. Not that I know much about that sort of thing. She's a sorcerer. She's a sorcerer confirmed. Sorceress. And this power alloweth thee to tear open the fabric betwixt realities, that thou mayst call forth the aether-starved de denizens of what remaineth of the thirteenth? What? Was, was that supposed to mean something, or are you just spouting random words at me? Lol. Honestly, I don't know how you all put up with this. I've only just met him, and his insufferable prattle is already giving me a headache. Bruh. Bruh, the orange shade. Gods, I still can't believe I'm having this conversation. And to think that I was flying about in a suit of armor waving a sword. That doesn't sound like me at all. Someone else inside you. Like Minfilia was inside me. Mmm. Aye, the similarities cannot be ignored. Though it is too early to say with certainty. Gaia may well be the Oracle of Darkness. Oh. The Oracle of Darkness? What does this mean? It means that you may have been right when you said she is something. She has something in common with Emmet Selk. Those who have been used as a living host by an Asean have no recollection of events that occurred during their possession. This I know from personal experience. Damn, but Gaia seems to have some memory still, even if they are a little hazy. Moreover, she has remained in control of herself, even when she heard the voice within. Much like you and Minfilia. And though Reen was very much her own person, Minfilia's presence did exert a change upon her outward appearance, granting her hair and, and eyes a hue akin to that of a dear, our dear departed friend. It is therefore not unthinkable that Gaia's raven locks may be a manifestation of the darkness which hath come to reside within her. But I was born like this, and my parents, they both had black hair too. Or at least, I think they did. It's been so long since I saw them. I can't remember too well. But enough about me. You're Minfilia, aren't you? The Oracle of Light, who they were hosting in Yulmore? That's right, though imprisoning is a better word. They kept me locked away, and I didn't know much about Yulmore and its people, or the rest of the world for that matter. I see, and how exactly did the Oracle of Light come to run with the Warrior of Darkness? Well, it all started when... Yes, I see. I still remember the day everyone went raving mad. And Lord Vothry fled. Everything after that is still a blur, though. Oh. From what Gaia's told me, she wasn't part of the mob that attacked us. But how she, but how was she able to resist Vothry's control? Mayhap, t'was the intervention of this fairy, of whom she speaketh. Hmm, as curious as that may be, we still don't know why she appeared out of nowhere as soon as Eden took flight. This is just a guess. But I'd say that the fairy reacted to it in some way, and for whatever reason made me go after it. Yes, that seems like the only explanation. I don't know about you lot, but I've had enough nattering. I'm going back to Eden. What? But why? The fairy wanted something from Eden, and knowing what that is will bring me a step closer to discovering exactly what has been living in my head all these years. Besides, my memories aren't going to restore themselves, and certainly not through idle chit-chat. So I'm going, and that's that. Gaia, wait! Insufferable. Utterly insufferable, and yet we can't well leave her to her own devices. Come on. She can't have gone far, especially in those heels. Get away from me! Oh boy. Gaia! <clears throat> it seems I've no choice. What? Huh? She has the time magic. What am I? Them lips, man. Them's Angelina Jolie lips. I'm not entirely sure what I just witnessed, but I'm glad she's unharmed. Power befitting the Oracle of Darkness. 
When you fought Gaia, she opened void gates, yes? Back in the source, portals such as those were all too common. But tearing open the veil between the 1st and 13th is a different matter entirely. We should be thankful that she's not of a mind to turn that power against us. For now. A most fascinating application of aetherial manipulation. The destructive blast did manifest a significant span of time after the initial casting. With sufficient mastery of such a technique, a second spell could be made to smite the target at precisely the same moment. While it would, be, while it would demand exceptional aetherial control, its tactical potential cannot be denied. What are you all gopping at? I don't mean to stare, but it's not every day I see magic like that. So this is the power of the, fair, the, of the fairy you spoke of? Ever since I was a child, it has whispered to me, telling me what to do. That's how I came to use its power. But there are things I can't even explain. Holes ripped in thin air, terrifying creatures crawling out, ghastly looking blades and armor appearing out of nowhere. Worst of all, is the dark energy that comes from inside. This power feel as, feels as though it's only flowing through me and never truly mine. And even when it answers my call, it always takes a few moments for the spell to work. So in summary, you don't have control over the magic. Well, it's not as if I ever try to control it. I haven't been... I haven't made a habit of fighting wild beasts. Unfortunately, it's part and parcel of traveling through Amarang. And while I understand that you want answers, you're not going to find them unprepared as you are. But if your heart is set on this, then we'll help you. Reen, think about what you're saying. You're seriously considering taking Gaia to see Eden? There's no telling what might happen if she loses control again. So the safest option is for her to stay away until our work is done. Somewhere we can keep an eye on her. You must realize it's for her own good. I must concur with Thancred's assessment. At present, we know precious little of Gaia's origin, and less still of her powers. If she is indeed the Oracle of Darkness, her presence may complicate a task already fraught with peril placing our mission and her own well-being in jeopardy. In full knowledge of this, the risk, dost thou still wish to pursue this course? It wasn't so long that I was living in isolation, being held against my will. Maybe the people keeping an eye on me thought that was for my own good, too. But if we shut Gaia away for our own convenience, we're no better than Vothri and Ranjit. I've learned that when someone is in need, we must reach out a helping hand, not push them away. Now it's my turn to do, f to do for Gaia what you've all done for me. Even knowing the danger that lies ahead, I won't choose the easy way out. This is the path I've chosen. Is that good enough for you? Well, I can't say fairer than that. How about you, Orange? The light of thy spirit doth burn bright. Mine apologies, my dear. But we felt it necessary to test thy resolve. Let it suffice it to say thou hast left no room for doubt. For what it's worth, Reen, I never doubted you. But make no mistake. The danger that Uriange and I spoke, is, spoke of is all too real. If you're prepared to go through with this, we'll be right there, beside you. That means a lot to me, thank you. I couldn't care less who I travel with, but if we're going to go, then let's get going already. There's supposed to be some sort of craft waiting at the Southern Watch, yes? Come along then, and don't fall behind. How, does she, how can she walk in the sand, bruh? Of course I'm worried about what may happen when Gaia gets close to Eden. We'll keep a close eye on her. We'll make sure she's all right. Though our circumstances hath changed, our mission most assuredly hath not. Restoring life to the empty remaineth our primary objective. It might be a bit of a tight squeeze with the five of us. But we'll manage. Perhaps Rianje can sit on top of our luggage. Wait, I want to talk to Gaia. Wait, I want to check out her glam. Dude. She's styling. As usual, we should keep our sojourn here as brief as possible. Let's tend to business quickly. I had hoped that during our absence, the rebalancing of ambient aether might work further change. Alas, was not to be. Everything seems fine here, as far as I can tell. As for Gaia, she hasn't started attacking anything yet, so I'll take that as a good sign. Eden, where I'll find the answers I seek. The bringer of the flood, the first sin eater. Would it lead me to my past or my future? What awaited on the, th on the path ahead, I couldn't say. But I had no choice but to take the first step. I know what it's like. It was the same for me. Because Thancred freed me from Yulmore. And I had a chance to see the world. 
More importantly, though, I met all kinds of people, and they taught me not to live in another's shadows, but to be myself. Maybe one day you'll have that chance, too. Said your piece, have you? I... One day? What's that supposed to mean? I just... I don't know how the great Oracle of Light sees such things, but someone like me, who's only known life in Yulmore, was no, there was no tomorrow, there was no future, only the here and now. And while we waste time on these meaningless conversations, I feel each moment of my life slipping away. Time, it won't wait, not for me, not for anyone. I don't know how much longer I can hold on to who I am. I'm sorry, Gaia. Hm, it's probably not even my real name. It isn't? When Thancred asked me my name, I couldn't remember. And that's when the fairy whispered to me, Gaia. But if you grew up in Yulmore, surely someone there must know who you are. Everyone I once knew had either disappeared or had been turned into sin eaters. Those whose, whose faces and names I still remember, that is. In the end, we found not a single person who so much as recognized me. As far as I can recall, I've never been the most sociable person. But still... Well, even if it's not your real name, I think Gaia sounds lovely. If you're happy with it, then it's, that's what I'll call you. And if you're willing, instead of calling me the Oracle of Light, please call me Reen. It's not the name I was born with. That's long forgotten now. But the one... But the one the people whom I consider family gave to me. Is that so? Well, as much as I'd love to keep up this chatting, there's something that's bothering me. I thought the fairy would have reacted to Eden in some way, but so far nothing whatsoever. From what I gather, it wasn't until Eden started moving that I appeared at, that I appeared out of the blue. Perhaps if you were to actually try flying it, flying it somewhere, the fairy might break its silence. If you got elements to restore or whatever it was, why don't you hurry up and get on with it? At once, your ladyship. You need to learn some manners. And you need to stop wasting my time. I want to slap her. All right, everyone. I think we've talked for long enough. If you're ready, let's make our way to Eden. My memories, I think they're slowly coming back to me. My mother and father would constantly blather on about how the flood of light could to return to the end of the world when we least expect it, and that we should live each day as though it were our last. They would often say, I wish this moment would last forever. That was until they were selected for ascension by Lord Vothry, and were never to be seen again. Since I had no other relatives, or even any close friends to speak of, I was left alone in the world. <sighs> a past like that hardly seems worth remembering, does it? Her parents were eaten by Vothry. Holy shiznits. Reed's little chat with Gaia reminded me that, for all our obvious differences, there are things we have in common. I too grew up not knowing who my parents were. The day Louis Soir gave me the, the surname Waters was one I'll never forget. Years later, it was under rather more desperate circumstances that I gave a certain young girl the name Minfilia. Little did I know then that it would end up crossing time and space, taking on a meaning I could never have foreseen. It came to be pre passed on to one girl after another, binding them to a fate not their own. In a sense, it it may be said that I chose not only one, but two names for Reen. But by whatever name she is called, she's truly her own person now. But as central to our lives as names are, I believe that it isn't the name itself, but the bonds it symbolizes that matter most. I've done some reading about the land swallowed up by the flood, but it's no easy task to find locations with a dormant element. I'm glad we have Uriange to point us in the right direction. All right, Uriange. Point me in the right direction. Following the initial changes wrought by the release of water and earth, the empty hath displayed no sign, further signs of alteration. If we are to break the status quo, we must needs employ a catalyst, a third element that shall rouse and stabilize those unleashed energies in activity. Therefore, I propose lightning. So the primal would be Rabu, yes? From what I've heard, a guardian from the forest and not particularly keen on conflict. You've actually fought him, haven't you? Yes. He's half man, half beard. Another half beard. For <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. Thancred mentioned that he more closely resembles a person than a beast. Unlike most other primals and apparently he tends not to move about much. I'm glad to see our lessons have paid off. 
Well, it's like you say. If we want to call forth an accurate, an accurate representation of the primal, I should picture it in my mind as clearly as possible. At the very least, it's worth a try, but the rest is up to Zordia. In order for this to work, we need to actually fly somewhere, yes? So rather than sitting on one spot while you exchange anecdotes, why don't you get this blasted thing moving first? Can I hit this girl? This girl, one must admit the suggestion is not without merit. Reen, might I suggest Gan Gandalf Thunder Plains is our next location. These plains, it is rich, were perpetually blanketed in, in storm clouds. The only source of illumination, the ceaseless barrage of lightning. Then that's where we're headed. We're heading. Come on, Eden, we've got a job to do. This should be a good spot as any. All right, Zordia, whenever you're ready. Memories of Ramu flash through your mind. This had vo this is voice acting? Yo, Ramu looks so cool. Wow, there's voice acting. Yo, Ramu looks so cool. Thou wouldst forge this world anew, I Ramush. Ramu, to test. Judgment jolt. Are we supposed to do anything here? Holy sh! What the? F um. Um. Guess you're supposed to do something there. I'll figure it out. trying to watch the mechanics. Oh, they're also on the side, so you want to be in between, but also, okay, cool. Not toward the end, okay. Thanks, Magna Carta. I don't know, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I, I'm like, I don't know, oh, shoot. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. Okay. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I honestly really, really, really don't know what I'm doing. I like this version of Ramu. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of mechami uh, mechanics that I don't know. Great. That was that was that was not. That was unfortunate. That was very unfortunate. Oh boy, what the heck is this? I know, Frizz, I know it's over. I don't know what happened. I'm so confused. <laughs> Is this the Thunder Plains? Yo, that's so cool. Wait. You can see the travel center to the north. Wait, you can see the travel center to the north? Hold on. Where? <gasps> Over there! Wait! That's so cool! What? It's right there! Dude! Well, no, that's not- that's not the center. That's the place that they stop underneath. 
Because you, uh, Riku, Riku, uh, Riku's scared of the light, lightning. I had my eye on Gaia the entire time you were fighting Ramu, and besides the sort of reaction you might expect from someone watching you take on a half-man, half-flying horse thunder god, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. The fact that Eden itself also showed no signs of being affected by her presence can only be a good thing, but I'd understand if Gaia herself were more than a little disappointed that she's no closer to the answer she seeks. Once again, it was a most superlative display of thy pu puissance. Now I could not fail but notice that body did belong to Ixion. Wait! Oh my gosh, I, why didn't I notice? Half, half Ramu, half Ixion. Fabled equine embodiment of lightning, of lightning. Hast thou perchance encountered the beast? I thought I was prepared to expect anything, but I didn't expect Ramu to turn, qu turn out quite like that. Appearance aside, he was quite aggressive as well. The Sylphs believed in him as a kindly guardian. Clearly, uh, clearly makes a difference to his temperament. Anyway, I'm just glad it's over. Let's get back to the camp and see if anything's changed. Hmm, the crystal's a different color, but apart from that, it all looks the same. It may look the same eye, but it feels different. The air has grown slightly more humid, as it does before rain. I have to say, I'm not ex I'm not exactly prepared for wet weather. If Eden can control the elements and so on, can't you tell it to send those clouds somewhere else? Can I smack her? If changing yellow crystals to purple is the extent of its abilities, it's no surprise the fairy didn't bother showing up. I hope that whatever's next is most worthwhile. Rather than influencing the ground beneath our feet, Eden, Eden hath brought <coughs> changed the firmament above. And yet tis clear that more dr dynamic element is required for the natural cycle of, of precipitation and evaporation to be complete. So we need movement. Would wind do the trick? It seems we have a plan. Let's not dwell too much on the effects of each individual element and instead focus on seeing them all restored. The power of the Oracle not to be sniffed at, it seems. All my life you were a constant companion, your voice ever seeping into my mind. Why then of all times did you abandon me, deaf even to the crashing of thunder, or were you simply biding your time? Gaia's pretty. I'm not sure what I was expecting to see after resorting, restoring the lightning element, but I did feel a little disheartened. Still, as Thancred and Rianje say, there are changes, there are changes taking place, even if they're not immediately obvious. As much as I bemoan Rianje's long-winded explanations, we'd be lost without him to take care of all the aetheral science and whatnot. Obviously, I'm quite sparing with my praise, as I wouldn't want to go to want it to go to his head. One plan fails to achieve the desired effect, so you move on to the next one with minimal brooding and prattling. It seems we're finally learning. I don't like this girl at all. She may be pretty, but... Uh, we set out once more. Might I ask if thou art familiar with the process by which rain is made to fall? It's an elegant conspiracy! I suppose so. Then thou shan't have difficulty understanding the explanation to come. The restoration of our first element, the empty, was once more blessed with the most essential ingredient in the cycle of precipitation, water. Under normal circumstances, the heat existent in the atmosphere would cause water to evaporate from the land's surface. An invisible vapor, it is borne by the wind high unto the firmament, where it doth condense as clouds before descending once more, returning to the land in the form of rain. It seems we need wind expected aether to create. Uh, it seems we need wind expected aether to create more clouds. That it hasn't rained yet it must mean there aren't enough. And even before that, we need fire expected aether to make the water evaporate. It seems to me that one's not much good without the other. Why don't you just draw both elements together? You're suggesting that Zordia fight two deform de entities. Each one as deadly as Ramu as at the same time. Do you realize how absurd this is? And yet, tis a notion that doth warrant further consideration. Oh, you can't be serious! Cast your minds, if you will, to the elemental wheel I did show you in the bookman's shelves. Wind giveth rise to lightning, whose spark doth produce fire. By restoring both wind and fire in tandem, we may maintain balance between these dynamic element forces. The ensuing battle shall 
indubitably present an ordeal unlike any Zordia hath ever faced. I believe, however, th that this path doth lead to the prize we seek. So we're fighting both at the same time? Ifrit and S and Garuda? Oh, so perhaps it's not so absurd after all, eh, Thancred? I wouldn't dream of questioning Rianger's grasp of science behind it. My concern is for the burden this would place not only on Zordia, but Reen as well. If Orange thinks it'll work, I'm willing to give it a try. Let's do it. As long as you know what you're letting yourself in, uh, yourselves in for. You're going to need all your strength, so see that you get plenty of rest. Gaia! This girl has issues, man. She needs patience. I have selected a location in which wind and fire aspected aether lie dormant. Though I shall wait until Reen hath completed her preparations, ere I dispense with the particulars. I'd rather Reen keep her mind on our work here than worry about Gaia. Mind you, it might be better for them to clear their air before we go any further. Can't stand all this waiting around. Having grown up in Yulmore, I'm used to, ha to only living for the moment. We never had any reason to concern ourselves with later, tomorrow, the future, and so on. Those things simply didn't matter. But after Lord Vothry disappeared and Knight returned, everyone in Yulmore started thinking differently. I was only there for a short time with Thancred, and I couldn't believe how much I it had changed. It was almost as though under Lord Vothry's rule, time had stopped moving altogether. And when it ended, life went back to how it was supposed to have been. They realized they had their whole lives ahead of them to make plans and look forward to a new day. Feels like I'm the only one who can't move on. As if I'm stuck in the past. What's worth, I, worse, I can barely remember any of it. Even so, I can't stand the way they act as if the past never happened. Choosing to forget it all? Yes, you're right. There's no use in trying to pilot I Eden while I've got other things on my mind. It's about Gaia, you see. The truth is that apart from Alice and Alfino, I hardly know anyone my own age. I thought that I should make an effort to be nice to Gaia, but... Well, you've seen how she is around me. I understand that she's got her own problems to deal with, but I thought that maybe I could help her in some way. It's not my place to intrude, and I should probably just leave her be until we finish restoring the elements. After all, that's more important, isn't it? Let me talk to Gaia while you concentrate on the task at hand, is what I would have said once upon a time. Aww. It seems to me that you're the one best qualified to take care of this little problem. I know she can be a bit prickly, to put it mildly, but if anyone can get through to her, it's you. Aww. They had dead cred being good dad! Although we've only known her for a short while, we're all she's got, and I think she realizes that. Just let her know she's not alone and she'll come around eventually. Right, I'll give it a try. Um, do you have any advice? Thancred certainly has the gift of the gab. He'll know what to say. I'd say, I'd say... I'm afraid that since arriving in the first, I've had little time to mingle with any locals, and I haven't a clue what young women like Gaia would be interested in. Ah, oh, that's given me an idea! I'll start with some small talk and go from there. Actually, since before she even woke up, I've been asking Lena about what's popular in the Crystarium. I thought it might be nice to show Gaia around the place one day, you see. So that's what you were doing. I suppose it makes for a nice change of pace from all that studying. And I must commend thee on on thy choice of confidant. The captain's powers of observation maketh her a veritable font of wisdom concerning the behavior of the Crystarium citizenry. Ah, Yes, and now it's time to put that knowledge to good use. Don't let the fear of rejection hold you back. Persistence is the key. Speaking from experience any chance by any chance? What whatever do you mean? Lessons learned from days spent in pursuit of, la of Lady Sphere, one might suspect. Gah! You couldn't help yourself, could you? <laughs> it's alright then, Cred. Your secret's safe with me. <clears throat> May I remind you that the reason we're here is to create a better future for everyone in the first, which includes you and Gaia. While it might not be on the same scale as bringing life back to the empty, if you're able to befriend her, that will be another way of contributing to a brighter tomorrow. So go on, she's waiting for you. All right, wish me luck. Uh, am I really doing squats? I'm doing Zack squats. Um, what do you want? <clears throat> Why am I doing Zack squats, though? Oh, uh, nothing really. It can wait till later. 
For all we know, there might not even be a later. If you've got something to say, hurry up and spit it out. Um, is everything all right? Not feeling strange from being around Eden or anything? Is that what you came here to talk about? Actually, I wanted to ask you. W would you like to go and have coffee biscuits with me? Aw. What? Coffee biscuits. They serve them at the se second serving in the Crystarium. Everyone's talking about them, so I thought that maybe once we finished our work here, you and I could go there together. Let me get this straight. You came to talk to me about biscuits? Yes, they're light and crispy, and when you dip them in the coffee, they go all nice and squidgy. The only reason you're even interested in the first place is because everyone else is doing it. Can't you think for yourself? Dude, girl, relax. I do what I want when I want. After all, the world could end at any moment. That's not going to happen, not if I've got anything to, anything to do with it. Listen, Gaia, I understand what you're going through. Believe me, I do. But you mustn't lose hope. A new day will come. Then another, and another. Life, life's not so bad. If you give it a chance, you'll see. Shut up! You think you know me? Even I don't know, know who I am. Until I find the truth, I'll never be free. Then we'll find it together. Reen is trying so hard. I've seen enough pain, enough loss. I don't want to see any more. And that includes you, Gaia. Why do you care so much about other people? What have they ever done for you? I'm sure you haven't forgotten how we Yulmorns treated you, the precious oracle of light like a bird in a cage. And yet, you act as if none of that ever happened. So forgiving, so selfless. You and your family brought back the night sky, and you finally had the chance to lead a normal life, but instead you're flying around in a giant sin eater, trying to turn a barren wasteland into something of a, some sort of paradise. And for what? I may not remember much of my past, but I'm fairly certain I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. Out of morbid curiosity, I'll see it through to the end. But if you think that makes us friends, you are very much mistaken. Girl. Gaia! She tried. Aw, Reen, she tried. I surmise that going, that, that to keep Gaia waiting over long would only agitate her further. I love her outfit. It's very reminiscent of, of Renoa's kind of. Not you as well. Look, I've had enough small talk to last me a lifetime, so don't even bother. I believe you have a job to do, yes? Then be quick about it. Reen's looking a bit down in the, in the doldrums, but you let me worry about that. Can't allow anything to interfere with whatever goes on in your mind when summoning those primals. I think we've both, both rested for long enough. Let's get started, shall we? <sighs> I hope it all goes according to plan. To defeat the day four manifestations of both wind and fire shall require every last mot of thy strength. That thou hast triumphed over such beings in previous encounters should be at the forefront of thy mind as we commence the summoning. Where are we going this time, Orianje? A place called Ashfall doth satisfy our requirements, I believe. The fables speak of the of travelers sweltering beneath the blazing heat of the midday sun, while after nightfall slicing winds did tear at their cloaks. Hmm, I see. Hopefully it won't be quite that bad when I draw out the elements. Reen, my dear, may I remind thee that to focus is not the same as to deny others' thoughts. Whatsoever it is that troubleth thee, thou wouldst be better for acknowledging it. Yes, you're right, of course. It's Gaia that I'm worried about. Aw. That is well. May thy concern for her lend thee yet more strength. It's time. I'll be begin I'll begin drawing out wind and fire in equal measure. Sordia, we'll only get one chance at this, so let's make it count. Memories of Gruda and Ifrit rage through your mind. There's a fun bit. I'll save it for tomorrow. I'll just unlock it. The first thing I'll do tomorrow. We're gonna die. Oh, it's... Whoa! Whoa! Yo, I like this Garuda. This Garuda looks bad arse, man. Oh, this music! This theme is so good. Primal Angel Ifrit with Garuda tracks. 
It sounds amazing. Here we go, here we go. of the red. Looks like everyone is an enemy. I mean, at least the music's great! I'm floor bard. Wait, give me a second. Let me change party member to blue. I don't think I like that either. Apply. Close. Oh, if we I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be over here. So you guys do that. I'll be over here. You do your. You do your thing. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my thing. Okay. I'm gonna do my thing. Ah! This music is so badass, man. What? I like it. He who soareth on the wings of... Um... Yo, Kulin, thank you so much! Thank you so much for the... The, uh, host! I appreciate... I appreciate ya! Man, try... Try not to die, die as hard. Why is trying not to die so hard, man? I'm just hoping I don't get anyone else killed. Because knowing me... Ah! 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 I'm dead! <laughs> Dude. This is so cool. Look at him! Fandaga MVP? Penny MVP, Gecko, Fandaga MVP. <clears throat> I guess I don't want to be behind him because that's where he hits. He hits from behind. So I'm assuming. How did I get hit by that? No! We're dead. I grovel shamelessly before you, Sakat. Why? <laughs> why are you asking me why? I grovel before you too, Thundaga. that oh that's that's the thing I see it I see it okay okay I was like what is that thing in the I barely saw it before I see it now I did not I didn't I, I didn't see that <laughs> What do I 
do for Infernal Howl? Infernal Howl. <laughs> I'm putting in so much work for Thundaga. I need to like stay alive for at least a few seconds, man. I need to stay alive for at least a few seconds. man bun bun you got this you got this bun bun did I die I died again because I was there on the side bruh I don't what do I do with this what do I do with this what do I do with this It. <laughs> the Daga MVP for key. She keeps trying to res me. I'm so sorry, the Daga. I'm making you work. Your poor MP. Your MP. <laughs> Girl. Girl, I appreciate you, but like, I feel like I'm a lost cause at this point. <laughs> Hands of hell. Oh shoot, I should I need a tether myself over here. I'm not gonna make it! I'm not gonna make it! I didn't make it! Damn it! Like nobody's business. I am concentrating. I'm concentrating. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. <laughs> Did I die? Did I die? I f it looked like I died last second. Four team times for final fantasy <laughs> 14. For a moment, I thought Reen had lost control of the Aether. Luckily, we managed to avoid any major disaster from what I can tell. That two such ferocious beings should meld into a single entity is frightful indeed. Further research must needs be performed to fully comprehend this unexpected phenomenon. Combining and contrasting powers of different primals, that seems an awful lot like the Ultima Weapon. In any case, I'm pleased to see that you were as successful here as you were in the Praetorium. That was incredible! I've never imagined they would fuse together like that, but you took them down all the same. I suppose the main thing is that we're now two elements closer to restoring the Aether of the Empty. Let's go and see what's, what difference it's made. Ooh, that's a pretty crystal. Rain. It actually worked, just like Rion J said it would. Everything we could have hoped for. Indeed, our endeavors have been repaid manifold. I wonder what will happen when we sh when we restore ice. Um, is something the matter? One more element, and then what? You'll have achieved the impossible, while I'll still be nothing. No memory, no past, no family, nothing. The world has removed has moved on and left me behind. Anyone who ever knew me is either dead or gone. Them lips, though. So, Almighty Eden, you can mend this broken world, but can you restore one girl's memories? 
Give me my life back, damn you! I still hunger. Ah! Extinguish the accursed light. Awaken our true power. Enough riddles! Tell me who I am! You are my fire. I am... Gaia. Gaia, what's wrong? Gaia means the world. So, what does that mean? Reclaim your memories. Fulfill your destiny. I don't understand. Gaia, can you hear me? Get away from me! <sighs> Amidst the sound of falling rain, your voice called from within. Long after the rain passed, your voice echoed on. Oh.